Basketball though, Clemson, Georgia Tech, Jackets off the loss to NC State, perfect and nine tips at home. Now we're just, you know, checking the record book there, see if you know who holds the single game scoring record for Georgia Tech in an ACC game. Mm. Mm. It is Dennis Scott, 37, back in 1990 against North Carolina. Well, we're telling you that because B.J. Elder gave that a run. That's for three. Elder on the break. That's a high percentage shot from right there. He had 20 in the first half. Second half, Elder in an emergency can be used as a flotation device. That goes, he was six of 10 from three. There's one from behind the arc. That gave him 35. Now at the line with 36, the free throw to Ty Scott's record. Oh no, but still, let's not be critical of the kid. Huh? 36, not bad. His team wins 76-69, Duke on Saturday. Florida plays at Tennessee Saturday. First a trip to Tuscaloosa Tuesday, where Alabama was 56 and three at home the last three seasons. But for this one, no Ernest Shelton out with a sprained knee ligament. Second half, Kennedy Winston spots up for three. And Winston was on fire. Five threes in the second half at 25 points in the game. And the Crimson Tide have a one-point lead, but Florida answers. He knew they would. Anthony Roberson, the double crossover bank shot. Oh, foul. He was 9 of 16 from the floor. Throw in a top 10 nominee. Matt Walsh misses, and Roberson, well, he doesn't. That broke a 74 all-time. Roberson finished with 26. Florida wins 88-78. The Gators hold Alabama to four points in the game's final six and a half minutes. Indiana hosting number 23, Purdue. A win would give the Hoosiers sole possession of first in the Big Ten. Patrick Ewing Sr. watching Patrick Ewing Jr. throw down. Dad, your thoughts? That's a proud papa right there and a top 10 nominee. Roderick Wilmot knocks down a three. Hoosiers are up by four. Next Boilermaker trip, David Teague for three. And it's a one-point game. Final ticks, watch Teague. He leaves Wilmot wide open, and Bracey Wright spots him. Wilmot will knock down the three. Wilmot, the redshirt freshman, had six points, and you've just seen them all. The Hoosiers out front alone in the Big Ten. They have won five in a row. They beat the Boilers 63-58. Louisville basketball coach underwent a battery of tests Tuesday at the Cleveland Clinic to try and determine exactly what's been causing him such terrible pain in his left side. Patino says the problem is not cancer-related or life-threatening, but he hopes to be back in charge of his team by this weekend. Still, that leaves the Cardinals in assistant Kevin Willard's hands Wednesday night against Houston. The team is very focused right now. We're 15-1. and one. Uh, They have a goal to win the conference championship and go on from there. Uh, Right now, as a team, our main worry is Coach Patino. Uh, once he comes back, you know, we know he's going to come back healthy, so everything's going to be fine. Our team's, you know, our prayers are with Coach, and that's about it. Louisville riding a 15-game win streak. Only four card teams have longer runs of excellence. They've also won 15 straight at Freedom Hall. They're 42-5 and five there in three seasons under Rick Pitino. They want win number one there under Willard. Wednesday, McGuire's prized pupil in the coaching ranks. Rick Majerus announced this season will be his last at Utah. The overweight coach who has battled heart problems for more than a decade is out of the hospital after suffering chest pains Tuesday. Majerus may coach again this season. Assistant Kerry Rupp will lead the Utes in the interim. Like McGuire, Majerus is a natural to continue in the game as an analyst if he so desires. Rick Majerus has never had a losing season in his 20 seasons as a head coach. The one thing that's eluded him is an NCAA title. He came close in the 97-98 season when the Utes lost to Kentucky in the NCAA championship game. Rick Pitino on medical leave. Kevin Willard hoping to coach up Louisville against visiting Houston. Kevin Willard he doesn't have a little mint. I asked him, I said, you have any advice? He said, yeah, just don't lose. I said, thanks, coach. I appreciate that. Just for the cards, Tino expected to be back at practice Thursday. Are... Louisville also playing without the one-two punch from Garcia and Dean, both injured. Didn't matter on this play. Al Haji Mohammed, the dunk and top 10 nomination. Cardinals using a 23-5 run to get comfortable. Houston uncomfortable. Luke Whitehead after the turnover. turnover. Louisville up a half rack at halftime. And Nate Daniels had the hot hand. Five for ten from distance. Coach Willard and the cards. 64-48 winners. From number four to number five, Kentucky hosting Ole Miss, seeking its 800th SEC victory. Well, let's compare the two. Let's just say Ole Miss is looking for half that number of wins. Head-to-head -head matchup, not really a matchup. 
And the 42 conference titles to zero for Ole Miss. First half, Aaron Harper for three. Harper's 250th career three sets a new school record. In the second half, Cliff Hawkins, the drive of the dish. Antoine Barber, Barber at 12 points. Chuck Hayes to Eric Daniels. Wow, a top 10 nominee. Daniels at 24. Kentucky does get that 800th SEC win. 11th ranked Mississippi State entertaining Tennessee. Rick Stansbury's Bulldogs coming in at 16-1 overall. 5-1 of the conference. Off the miss, Timmy Bowers for the follow. A top 10 nominee. Lawrence Roberts, good hands. Going the other way. Mississippi State scored 35 points off 21 Tennessee turnovers. More of the same in the second half. Bowers a steal. Bowers at 18 on 8 of 15 shooting. And finally, more showing off by Mississippi State. The alley-oop. Roberts finishes with 20. And the Bulldogs finish off the Vols in a big way. John Chaney hoping to join the 700 Club Wednesday as his Temple team hosted St. Bonaventure. Second chance at the milestone for the Hall of Fame coach. David Hawkins had 21, told the coach they'd win it for him when the Bonnies began to rally. And when it they did 76 57 your final and coach Cheney joining some impressive company and afterwards the raspy one reflected I'm just uh, grateful that I was that I've been in one spot um, for so long so being here as long as I have and and the fans treating me the way they've treated me I win or lose that's special to me Cheney becomes the 16th coach in Division I history to record 700 career victories and just the fifth active coach to do it. Arizona's Lute Olson reached this milestone just a few weeks ago. Cheney will be hard-pressed to get number 701 on Saturday when Temple hosts unbeaten St. Joseph's. Hosting East Carolina, this one had a few highlights in it. James White, how's that for a jam? Guy nearly jumps out of the gym, are you kidding? Wow, Bearcats had a nine-point lead. Something special going on. White off the steal. Is he going to do it again? Wow! Guys has his own highlight reel. The human highlight film. Give him his own top ten list. Bearcats in a big way. North Carolina State looking for three straight at Chapel Hill for the first time in 50 years. Wolfpack have swept Carolina in each of the past two seasons. Jackie Manuel gets the steal and then shows off his mm. hop. Sticky V, what do you think? Brings the house down, baby. Brings the house down. Thank you, man. It brings the house down. Top 10 nominee, late second half. NC State gets a couple threes from Engine Atsur, but it's not enough. Rashad McCants, he had 13, and Carolina by a deuce, 68-66. Stanford, they beat Oregon State eight straight. Mike Montgomery's club's road is going to get a little tougher after this game. A top 10 nominee here off the Lonic miss. Justin Davis, the big fat finish. He had eight. Josh Childress. Doing work for the Cardinal. He had, that ain't nothing but an ultra perm. He's got that fancy hair doing. He's got three there. And one more time, give me all three of these. He was the only Cardinal player in double figure. Stanford wins it by 14. All right, Arizona began the night two games behind the Cardinal in the Pac-10 at Washington and beating the Huskies eight straight. Nate Robinson, previous career high of 25, steal, score, two-point game in the second half. More Robinson. He's five foot nine. The arrow's on him. The arrow is going to elevate. So is Robinson. This is a top ten nominee in this. Whoa! Nate the Great. That's his nickname. Big ups for him. He's having a huge night. Says his favorite show is Sports Center. Well, they better be rolling the tape in the Robinson household. There he is, rebound and bucket. You may remember his daddy, Jock Robinson. Great tailback for the Huskies. Sonny got some of that. Robinson. 31 points, five rebounds. Huskies outscore Arizona 56-38 in the second half. First win over a top 10 opponent for the Huskies since beating Arizona in 1999. 96-83. Bobby Bowden may not be in danger of losing his footing around Tallahassee as the king of Florida State, but Leonard Hamilton is at least reminding folks that there is life after the bowl game and before spring practice. Already this hoop season, the Knowles have beaten three ranked teams. First Maryland, then both North Carolina and Wake Forest last week. But those three victories all came at home. Thursday, FSU traveled to Cameron Indoor where they're 0-13 all-time. Duke also happens to be on a 13-game winning streak.
Tim Pickett, ACC Player of the Week. His and his Knowles teammates have been busy little boys. The checklist this season, well, let's see. We we'll beat North Carolina, we beat Wake. Practice the three-point shooting. They're the best in the ACC at that. Beat Duke, well, they've got J.J. Redick, who he's the best shooter I've seen in person in forever. He had a game-high 24. Duke up a dozen, but wait, there's Pickett. He had 16 to lead the Knowles. They're down a touchdown. Just over two minutes left. Von Wafer, the freshman on the boards. Seminoles only shot 30%, but they had a rebounding edge over Duke. There's Wafer. Getting the Knowles within five. They're not done. Then Wafer. Give me all three of these. FSU within two. They're going to steal one maybe in Cameron, but then Duke. The senior, Chris Duhon, said, this is my team. I was looking for the shot the whole time. A huge three. Puts Duke up five. That's pretty much it. Then Wafer, the inbounds, gets picked off there. And as for beating Duke, well, Knowles going to have to wait till they visit Tallahassee a little later this year. They go down their 0-14 all-time in Cameron. Duke didn't shoot well, but they survived. Stay in the ACC. Maryland's won 8 of 9 against Wake Forest. Gary Williams coaching in his 800th game early on. He watched his lefty from Maine, Nick Caner Medley. Watch him follow the John Gilchrist miss. And the huge finish. Terp shot 52% in the first half. Caner Medley a team high 15. Terps were up on the road 10. But then Skip Prosser must have told his fellas, guys, we can't lose five in a row. Chris Paul takes it down the lane. We're tied at 64. Then Trent Strickland only had one field goal in the whole game. It was that one. Caps a 14-2 wake run. They're up three later. Jamal Levy down to Kyle Visser on the block. He flushes it home. He had 11. Wakes up two. And then Chris Paul, the freshman. This kid is so nice. He had 17 in the second half. One, two, three the hard way. Wake got up by a bunch. Maryland cut it to three late, but Wake holds on to win. Zaga and the Jenny Craig Pavilion. That's where San Diego plays. Blake Step tied with John Stockton. School assist, second all time, no more. That's Corey Violet, Alley Oop Slam, top 10 nominee. Blake Step now in second all by his own self. But wait, Brett Melton for the Toreros. He had 22. San Diego within three. They beat Gonzaga last time they played there. Then Step didn't have a big night shooting, only three of 12 from the floor, but he finds Adam Morrison for the Johnny jump up. He had 20. Gonzaga prevails by 12.